Welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself a treehouse. Without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. And right here, we have a tree. Essentially, you need a giant tree, and it's very unlikely that you'll be able to get a naturally generating one that can support this, because you're going to be actually living in it. From here, what you need is a pallet. Mine is uncharacteristically small for the channel, but it's really simple. Oak, birch, spruce, crimson. And then from here, go to your tree, and this is where you're going to be building the tree house. You're going to have to start off with finding the center of the tree. Hopefully you made yours an odd number of blocks for this reason. I'm going to enable night vision. And from here, find roughly the middle of the tree. Try to not intersect with anything. I added some honey, might need to move some of that. And then, you should be adding a ladder through all the way. You need to be able to get to both branches and if you really need to, the canopy as well. With all this in mind, start digging pieces out of the tree and place a spruce door right here. Unless you want to incorporate the tree house into down here and add a proper wall, you'll only want to have a door. Right here, I have a little entranceway into the rest of the tree. You can see a couple of stairs blending into here. That part's kind of optional. Staircase up in order to make it convenient. And then we have this small hallway here. Make sure to include a lot of decorations. Making a boring hallway like this would be boring, which means we need to add things. Make sure that there are no more than three blocks in between each decoration, otherwise it can end up looking bare. Armor stands, bookcases, candles don't even have to be lit. We have saplings, amethyst, even decorated pots. Then this ladder goes all the way up, which gives us ample opportunity to either one, make small rooms inside of the trunk. Say we need something small like an enchanting room and don't want to put it in any of the buildings, put it in there. With this in mind, what you want to do is go to each layer where you want to build something. These are the branches. So I'm going to go in and then I'm going to dig here. You can see it's kind of dark, so I need some night vision. But otherwise, very simple stuff. Even make a whole small room in here. No needed decoration on the walls. Just put in your standard interior stuff. Door here. What do you know? Place a small house here and do the same for the other branch. We go in here, dig in a few blocks, and then, what do you know, ladder. Once you have yourself all the ladders and infrastructure needed to begin building, you want your tree, smoothen out the branches, and add a platform of birch planks. Don't bother with double layering your walls because there's not enough room on most trees unless you went completely berserk and built a giant one, way bigger than this one. You can see here, very basic. And then we'll pop in some windows. These windows don't have to be very complicated and we're going to be adding some stripped logs to this too. Once you have all this in place, then add in your basic utilities. More crafting tables, furnaces, beds, a few chests here and there, whatnot. And then we'll have to go and smoothen up the bottom and the sides with extra spruce. Get all your spruce related blocks ready. And then do something like this. You can see here, pretty basic for the time being. But we can go out on these corners and then we can add these in order to give it a more unique shape. Of course, you need to make sure it's not clashing. If one part is extra detailed and another isn't, it's not going to look very good. Which means you need to use a consistent style all throughout. Something like this. And then go up, more stairs, and then smoothen it out at the top. Of course, very basic for the time being. It's going to be more polished, but this is roughly what we need. By placing the design I made on all four sides, I now have a very simplistic treehouse. I connected them up with crimson, did this for the bottom too, although it gets cut off by the branch. A little extra support here by making it look like it's drilled into the branch a little. And then on the inside, I cover up the crimson by using crafting stations. 
and then on the ceiling, stairs, and slabs. A little lantern at the top in order to light it up, and now we have a room. Fill it up with your utilities, but I recommend holding off on storage in this one, because one, it's kinda small, I mean that's a disadvantage of a treehouse, it's typically very small, but at the same time, if you place everything well enough, you can end up with a cute little home, and you won't even have to do much for the interior because what do you know, all your utilities already do that. A few flower pots placed on your bed, and then you have a little living space. But of course, hold off on storage and enchanting. You probably won't have enough room in this area to do that. But otherwise, pretty simple. And then, down here, you might want to do stripped logs like this. This is down to personal preference on whether you want to do it. I'm going to go without, but you might want to do this. Now, place down a second one of these on another branch, but don't make it identical. Change up the shape a little, because if they're both the same, then it becomes a little monotonous. And if you have more than two branches, if you do it all the same, that's going to look more cookie cutter than anything. So make a similar but slightly different design for your other branch. And don't forget the fact that it doesn't have to be on a branch. You can put one in here, or you can even make platforms instead of only houses. For the big reveal of the interior, this is what it looks like when all decked out. You can see the windows are a bit larger because I slightly redid the exterior and replaced the ground with carpet and wool. But you can see this is a really cozy place. One chest here for emergency items and treasures. We have our furnaces, stone cutters, you can't see any of the crimson, and we even have proper lighting in the form of redstone lamp. If we go outside, the only difference I made was that I changed it from a consistent stair slope to mixing in blocks occasionally. And what do you know, we have this teardrop shaped house. Although it creates a not the best image with this other incomplete house and the positioning of the honey, still, it's a really nice home. From here, what you should really note is one, we can incorporate more things through houses on the side rather than on branches, and two, try to go for verticality. Although you might be inclined to use something such as birch or oak for the roof, the crimson can provide a nice accent that really makes your build stand out even if it's slightly illogical. In this case, all you need to do from here is make another, but of course, make sure it's different. Now, it's time for a second room. Notice the shroom light based lighting, since lanterns wouldn't exactly work inside of a tree, looks slightly more natural, although a little whimsical. Essentially, I had an issue. I was too high up. You can see the canopies right there. The solution? Don't build a roof. Now, I have a lot more space. And with this extra space, I can do more. Chests here, barrels here, and of course, floating by a chain, and then if I need even more room, I can go down here. This allows me to build more platforms, and use the tree to its advantage. Rather than building on the tree, build with the tree. Because although occasionally you want to have things plastered on like this cute little cottage here, you need to work with the tree, or else you're going to have travel issues or a non-cohesive build. Include little prongs here and there, so that way you can get up and down easier, and then build floating platforms, like this, stairs all around, add some fences, whatnot. And now, you can maximize how much usage you get out of your tree by incorporating what a tree does best. It has a little bit of an unpredictable nature, and it's not static per se. Of course, yes, it is static, but it's not flat. It juts out at various points, it has contours and such. Although you can choose whether you want to have that smooth some things out, fix others, whatnot, still, you have a bunch of areas to work with. You should use that to your advantage to build the best treehouse you can. Right here, as you're incorporating your tree into the build, or really the other way around, there's something important you need to keep track of, lighting. Attach hanging lanterns to each of the branches, so that way they're more lit up. And while you're adding the extra things, think about some of the more niche things, such as, you know, an elytra port. It would be amazing if you could fly off here, take a firework, and look back on your build. That way you can, well, enjoy the build to its full glory by having a nice aerial view. 
Either way, attach more lanterns, add extra details here and there like the roofs or inside the branches you might want to use stripped logs, it's up to you. Down here, you can see there are a bunch of lanterns added in, and it makes the build look a lot more complete, mainly because it is. We have a bunch of platforms here, a new one right here, mainly just because the outro, because it turns out brewing fits really good at the top if you have water. Then in here, we have a nice enchanting table, a barrel for a lapis storage, might want to incorporate a grindstone in here too, if you think it fits the palette. And then we have all these little rooms here. Well, place to get your elytra on and glide away. Storage through barrels, storage through chests. A, another barrel, yeah. We have our living room, inside our little cottage on the whole thing. And then we have our bee nest. Right here, I have an ultra frog light, mainly because lighting reasons. With all this now incorporated, you now have a complete tree house. And one of the best things about the tree house is one, if you have a giant tree, it's very noticeable. If you go back through the building world, I moved a bunch of builds away from here, but still, this is incredibly noticeable from afar because all the lighting, being a giant tree, all that. And the crimson, although it might seem a little odd of a choice at first, it's one of the most striking things of the build from afar. You can see, of course, we have our lush greens, and then we have what looks like the forest movement of Endor with the trunk, and then we have the crimson. Might be a little hard to see if you're on mobile, but it's pretty noticeable if you're on desktop. With all this incorporated, perhaps you want to try this. Although, building a tree might be difficult, being able to have a tree house on it, even with its limited space, is quite the payoff. Because, very rarely do you get the opportunity to build something like this incorporated into a giant structure. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, it really helps me out. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out. <laughs>